Into the night, I see nothing but stars falling. Dan has been my trainer for a number of years. He is always cheerful, and if I'm struggling, he encourages me to continue, not letting me give in. I get great satisfaction from finding I can do things I thought I couldn't. I've known Hearty since 2012. I've worked with him since 2015. He's the most genuine, humble, nice man I've had the pleasure of working with. He's a great firefighter and a great friend. I've known Dan two years now. His knowledge and skills has helped me develop into the firefighter I've always wanted to become. Thanks, Dan. Dan is very friendly and adaptable, but always professional. He ensures your form and technique are correct, but never makes you feel bad if you can't complete something. What is going on YouTube fam? It's been a minute, I'm not going to lie. Over the last six months, my life has been very busy. Um, I've been you know, working in London in, in, the, in the fire service really, really hard, um, taking temporary promotion there. I've been um, away on holiday, I've had a nice little break. I've sort of tried to settle my life in terms of living by myself now um, and also managing bills managing social life during the corona slash covid pandemic that we've been having and are still having right now um, this video today is not going to be a video on how you can do a bench press with your sofa or how you can do a bicep curl with your mop this is just going to be an informative video to uh, show you guys who are, might be looking at personal training careers or have started a personal training career recently that just want some friendly, humble advice on how to benefit your business and make you a better personal trainer or coach, whatever you want to call yourselves. So some of the things that you may be asking yourself, am I doing enough? Am I a good personal trainer? Am I providing a service that my clients are uh, reaping the benefits from okay so as I say five points that I believe make a good personal trainer slash coach again whatever you want to call it um, the very very first principle that I have lived by is to listen listen to your client listen to the person that is paying you money to train them ask them what they want to do and yeah, they might say, lose weight and tone up. I want to lose weight and tone up. Everybody says that. Who doesn't want to lose weight and tone up? Specifically if you're um, training an older clientele. So listen to what the client actually wants. I've said it before in a previous video that you can have, you can take the average Joe, right? You can take the average person and you can put them through your workout. Yeah, they're going to sweat. Yeah, they're going to feel like they're going to be working out, but are they actually doing what they want to do? Is your programming, or does your programming, match up with their goals? There's no point in having someone come up to you and say, right, I want to improve the strength of my legs, and then going to smash them doing 50 burpees, 50 push-ups, 50 squats, like, you know, tailor the program to what they want. If they've got injuries... Be mindful of that. Listen to what they've actually done. It could be a knee injury. It could be a hip injury. Um, it might. They might have um, had like an operation, which actually then in turn makes you, as a trainer, have to adapt your programming to suit that person. Everybody is different, and you get groups of different people wanting different things. But the main thing that you need to do is listen to each and every individual that comes to you for advice or for help or for training. Listen to what they want, program the session specifically for them. As you get to know this person, uh, whether they're male or female, they might feel uncomfortable doing certain exercises, okay? That's, it's just human nature. I used to feel uncomfortable doing certain exercises. I still feel uncomfortable doing some now. Um, but again, listen to what they like to do listen to what they don't like to do. And I'm not saying just keep feeding them exercises that they like, because I do believe that um, 
it's the exercises that we don't like that benefit us the most. Um, and for most people that's squats, not mentioning any names. Um, yeah, so, so listen to what they like to do, listen to what they don't like to do, split the session up, have, get them to enjoy their session a little bit, but also get them to feel like they're actually working because what's the point if you're just gonna stand there next to somebody on a cross trainer and chat for 10 minutes? So basically, point number one, short and simple, ask the client what they want in specific, design the program around their goals, around their needs, and don't design the program around your ego. Listen to what they're asking you, what they want, and move forward helping them in that way for their specific needs. Nobody else's, not yours up here, not someone else that's watching you personal train them. Do it for them, they're giving you the money, they're uh, promoting your business, so listen to what they want and apply it naturally as they would like. That is what makes a good coach. Okay. Point number two, practice. Practice what you preach. If you're a personal trainer and, and you enjoy training, this will come naturally anyway. So for me, I love going to the gym. I enjoy training. I enjoy improving my strength and my, my conditioning. Um, I like losing weight and gaining weight. I like to see what I can sort of like eat and not eat to, to promote that. So calorie deficit, calorie surplus, that kind of thing. Um, I also get a huge buzz from what the gym brings to my life. Like I've said before, it's, it's not even like a hobby. It's just part of my life. It's a lifestyle. I feel good up here as well. So my reasons for practicing what I preach, um, number one is because if your clients are in the gym at the same time you're training, I guarantee you they're going to be looking at you and they're going to be, be and they're going to be, and they're going to say to themselves, "Well, if you're not doing it correctly, they're going to be saying, "Well, why is why is Dan not training at the intensity that he in, that he trains me at?" And you know, I might be just having an off day or something, but it, I think it is a staple part of your life as a personal trainer or as a coach to practice what you preach. Let people know that you mean business when you walk through those doors and you go into the gym. Never expect someone else to do something that you're not expected to do yourself. It's the same as, you know, treat others and speak to others how you want to be treated and how you want to be speak spoken to. I don't go and speak to someone like a piece of shit and then I'll be okay with someone speaking to me like a piece of shit, all right? So adapt that to, to, to your training. Don't make anybody do, you know, 50 kilo squats if that's for them or 100 kilo squats, whatever, if you're not prepared to put yourself through that and push yourself and make yourself um, feel nervous before you're about to do a set, you know, because a lot of these people that come through the door into the gym and hire a personal trainer, they may not have had a personal trainer before. They may not have, um, sort of like had any any intensity training like what you're going to provide for them so they're going to be nervous they're going to they're going to have butterflies they're going to have a lot of emotions going around in this in this in within their cells so so just make sure that you're seen to be training yourself and i know that image is not everything because there are some absolutely blinding blinding coaches out there um, that, that won't be in the best of shape compared to someone else, but there's a lot of other factors that, that depend on that. What I'm saying for you is if you're starting your business and you would like to um, get more business, be seen to be training. Train twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening, in the busy parts. Be polite to people, have good gym etiquette, okay? But make sure that people see you training and, make, and specifically make sure that your clients see you training. Practice what you preach, guys. That is my point number two. Okay, this brings me to point number three. And number three is to learn from others. There seems to be this big thing at the moment in the fitness industry, and I've noticed it for the last couple of years, is that when people get their qualifications, uh, personal trainers, gym instructors, they, they think that they know it all. Now, let, let me just say right now, I've been here 15 years. I do not know everything about everything. So if I want to know uh, a particular method of training like Valsalva movement or uh, CrossFit training or powerlifting 
or you know stretching and mobility, whatever it is, I will, if I don't know somebody that knows more about that, to go and ask, I will research it online. And I know that not everything you read online is correct and there's a lot of um, biased opinions about out there about what you should and shouldn't be doing in the gym. But I just think that, you know, learn from those people that have, that have the experience. No matter what job you do nowadays, you cannot beat experience. If you need a, you know, if you need your Cairo MOT in, right, you, you're not gonna go to like any old place to get your car MOT. You're not gonna let your mate do it, are you? So you're gonna to go to like a, a reputable garage, somebody that, that you know, that's qualified, that's been doing it for years. It's the same with personal training. Go to somebody who you feel is uh, reputable, who's been doing it a long time, and just ask for advice. Like a couple of months ago, I asked somebody in my local gym if they would help me with some powerlifting stuff. Now, I, I know some movements in terms of powerlifting, but I don't, I don't know everything about it. So in order for me to, um, to learn about that, I, I'm gonna ask somebody who knows what they're doing. Uh, and and I, you know, I've been in this 15 years. I am not afraid to ask anybody how to do something in fitness because we can all learn off each other if we just take that little chip off the shoulder, again, we drop the ego out and you ask for help. Number four is your general mannerisms. Okay, so as a trainer, your professional and confident attitude towards each and every session will make people feel more comfortable in your presence. So you will receive a lot of uh, first time, gym first timers that might come to you and be like, look, I haven't had a personal trainer before, I've been in the gym a couple of times, I'm not really very, very motivated, I'm a little bit scared to do certain things. So you can use that, use them, bring them in, get them under here, Okay, get them nice and comfortable. Be confident with your, uh, with your attitude. Be professional and be polite. There's no, there's no reason for you to shout at anybody and be, make yourself a nuisance towards anybody. Be polite, be encouraging, and be confident in how you deliver your sessions. If someone is really timid and really shy, they're not gonna want you to shout and say, come on, 10 more reps, come on, five more reps. Some people don't work like that. Granted, other people do, but that is just comes under the same bracket of your general mannerism. You have to gauge what you think uh, that person is gonna be like. So you have to gauge whether you think you're gonna have to, oh, I need to give this person a bit of a kick up the butt. Um, this person here, maybe not so much. So just be mindful that when you are delivering your sessions, you're always polite you're courteous, you ask other gym users and other gym members if they're using a certain piece of equipment. Now for me, if a PT comes up to me and says, mate, are you using that piece of equipment? I'll say, yeah, but you know what? You're more important to me because you've got someone that's, uh, that's paying you. I can come back to this. So I'm quite happy just to give that piece of equipment to, to that PT. Having done personal training for many years, that's the way I like to work. I'm a polite person in the gym, polite person out of the gym. When I'm training people, I always, always, always try to give the best advice that I can and in a polite way. Speaking to people like this builds up a level of trust. If you and your client or your clientele have this um, reciprocated trust between each other, they're more likely to carry on training with you. If there is no trust between you and the client, um, if you're, can, can be sometimes being like mood swings and stuff when you're training people, uh, you might just be having a bad day. Unless you know that person really well, I probably wouldn't voice that you're having a bad day. I would just turn it off up here and crack on with the session. Uh, depending on what you're charging, I know some people in London charge astronomical prices. Um, where I live, the going rate has always been 30 pounds. Um, and for me, my prices will never ever change. So um, instill that into the client. Uh, they're giving you good money, whether it's 30 pound, 40 pound, 50 pound uh, for the session. Um, just make sure that you're delivering that service, you're being polite, you're being confident, and you're speaking to them with a level of respect. So number four is your general mannerisms, your professional attitude towards each and every individual that comes to you for help. Okay, so number five. And the very last point that I want to express on is punctuality. Number one, never ever be late for a session. If you are going to be late for a session, 
let your client know it as early as possible. Number two, in terms of under the punctuality bracket, is plan your sessions. So never turn up to a session um, sort of empty, empty handed or empty, having empty thoughts in your mind. Prep yourself so that you know the person you're about to deal with. I always used to keep a diary um, of, of everyone's individual Park U forms and stuff and their Park U forms would be with their session planner. So I would plan the session on um, Excel, Word, whatever system you want to use. It might even just be like, like a notepad or, or something like that. But the, the more preparation you have and the more punctual you are uh, before going into a session, uh, that session is going to be uh, predominantly better. Also, another good thing with uh, planning your sessions is that, you know, if you go on holiday for whatever reason, or you have a week off or something else, you can give those session plans to that person, so then they've always got something to do uh, whilst you're away. You could alternatively send them an email um, uh, with, with a, a different session on if you wanted to from wherever you are, but sometimes it's not always... Um, uh, accessible to get Wi-Fi and things like that. Uh, so, so having session plans handy, you know, filled in on a fact file or something with their with a client's Park U, you can take a screenshot, send it over to them, or you can physically give them a hard copy of that workout. So it's not not only is it being punctual, as in like you know you're being nice, you're on time, uh, you don't miss a session, that kind of thing. But punctuality comes in other forms, such as being being a good being well organized um, and providing the service for your client that is um, efficient. So just on a little final note um, from me and Frank, um, you've listened to five ways that you can benefit your business as a personal trainer or coach. It's up to you whether you want to take on board this information or not. Uh, these are things that I've learned from, uh, you know, I've made mistakes in the past where sometimes I haven't been as punctual, I've been late to sessions, um, sometimes I haven't listened to what the client actually wants and I've done what, what I thought is best for, for, for up here rather than the actual individual themselves. Um, so, you know, but, you know, take on board my information or don't, it's totally up to you. This video is free to watch, um, you know, and my experience here um, is, is free for you to um, take advantage of if that's what you want. Um, so anyway, I hope that has helped you um, and your business and I look forward to uh, doing a different kind of video in the future. I am back now on YouTube and uh, it's been a long time coming and you just want to run off, don't you? So um, yeah, basically from me and Frankie, oh God. from me and Frankie, um, I will say goodbye and good luck if you're starting a new business.